Hey guys, welcome to the first video on algebra for year 12. Now, I know you're wondering, will this year's algebra video series be as exciting as last year's? Well, you guessed it guys, it's going to be even better. So buckle down and get ready for another crash course in algebra. To begin, we're going to start right from the top of the syllabus and look at simultaneous equations, which, don't worry, sounds a lot harder than they actually are just like everything else in maths. The reason that we're starting with these is because simultaneous equations show the relationship between variables quite simply. And remember, algebra is all about variables and how they relate to other variables. So then we'll be looking at how these equations are represented on graphs and how we can read solutions straight off of these graphs. Finally, we'll cover how digital technology can be used to graph and solve simultaneous equations. So let's get into it. All right, now I know you're dying for me to explain what a simultaneous linear equation actually is. So here goes. As you should remember from our year 11 algebra course, an equation is where we have two expressions or terms which equal one another. We also found out that a linear equation simply means an equation that when represented graphically is a straight line. So basically, Simultaneous linear equations are two different equations which have one solution that is the same for both of these equations. What this means graphically is that the lines of our equations will intersect at one point, giving us a common solution. But we'll get into that later. This is kind of like comparing two different cafes. They may have completely different menus which you can order off, but both will have coffee. So in this case, Coffee is a common solution between these two cafes. But I mean, we all knew that coffee is a solution to everything anyway, so I don't even know why I bothered with this analogy. Often the problem with simultaneous equations is that we don't know what the answer or common solution is. So we can't see that y equals coffee in either equation. In other words, we can't just look at the two equations we have and immediately know what the answer is. This means that we'll have to do a little bit of working out to figure out what the common solution is when we see two equations like 3y equals minus 2x plus 6 and y equals 3x plus 2. So if we were trying to solve these algebraically, we'd have to play around with one of the equations so that we can make a common variable the subject of that equation and go along solving from there. But in this video, we're not going to bother with solving simultaneous equations algebraically. We'll leave that task for a later video. Instead, we just care about what these guys look like when we graph them and how we can find that common solution without too much algebra. As is often the case in maths, it's easiest just to see the maths in action. So let's figure out how to do this by looking at a pair of equations such as y equals 5x plus 1 and y equals 2x minus 2. Just a heads up, if you've forgotten how to graph equations like these, check out the year 11 algebra videos on them. So it's actually really important that we draw our lines to scale and graph everything properly, because if we don't, then our lines will intersect in very funny places and it'll be hard to get the answer from the graph. So if we take a look at the graph, we can see that our two lines intersect at this one point, right? Well, this point of intersection is a common answer to both equations. If we go back to our cafe menu example, this point would represent the items that are the same on both menus. So here we have the coordinate minus one, minus four. Now we can see that at this point, x equals minus one and y equals minus four. And if we substitute these values into either of our equations, then our equations hold and are equal. It's often good practice to substitute values back in, just to make sure that you're correct. And if you're not, it usually means that maybe your scale on the graph is a little bit off. So this solution makes sense because this point lies on both of our lines and is the only point that does so. In other words, the common solution to our simultaneous equations that we've been looking for is x equals minus one and y equals minus four. So in short, if we're trying to solve a pair of simultaneous equations by using a well-drawn graph, all we need to do is look at the intersection of the two lines and figure out what the x and y values are at that point. 
short, simple, and sweet. Now, you may notice that this syllabus dot point mentions using digital technology to graph and solve simultaneous equations. So basically, all you need to know about this is remember in year 11 when we saw that there is software which graphs lines for us? Well, the same software can be used to construct two lines on the same graph, just like we did previously. So remember, if we want to read a solution of these graphs, then all we need to do is see where the lines intersect. Using digital software for this is really handy because it can construct precise graphs and find where the exact point of intersection is. This is useful if, say for example, the solution to an equation was something crazy, like x equals 0 0.0003765 and y equals 4.682657, because I don't know about you, but I'd struggle to get an answer that accurate off a graph that I'd drawn. In saying this, in a HSC exam, you wouldn't have to construct a graph of simultaneous equations digitally. You'd just have to interpret and read an answer of one already given to you. So this makes things so much easier for you. All right, everyone, that was a nice introduction to simultaneous equations, which is one of the main topics in the year 12 algebra syllabus. So today we saw that simultaneous linear equations are simply two straight line equations which have one common solution. If we were to graph this, it would look like two straight lines intersecting at one point, the common solution. Also, we covered how digital technology can graph simultaneous equations much more accurately than we can draw them, so they can be super useful when we need really precise answers. Okay, so that wraps up our introduction to simultaneous equations. I'll see you guys next time when we look at the algebra involved in these equations. Bye now!